praise God, oh praise God, oh praise God, oh praise God, praise God, oh praise God, oh praise God. Those that trust in his word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's bow our head. Dear precious Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I'm here today. Thank you, Lord, that you placed me in a family, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for every day what you do for me, Lord Jesus. For the miracle for thanks, Lord, for reveal yourself to me and reveal the purpose of the life, Lord Jesus. Lord, may you bless this moment. May you take away flesh and blood. May you, Lord, uh, put words in my mouth to say it, Lord. May you assort words, things that you need me to say, Lord Jesus, and bless your people. As I commit myself and surrender, I pray you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. While you stand, we're going to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And I'm going to bring something new. It's something that you've been hearing from our pastor who is preaching it. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We were here to emphasize what the word of God is all about. Praise God. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15 to 18. Praise God. What it says, church? We want to be all together. What, what? I want to hear everybody. We bring the all participating. What? what? Praise God. And with and believe. And what agreement had for ye are they what? I, I will dwell in them, and I walk in them, and I will be, and they shall be. 
you may be seated. See what I want of that 16. I will be their God, those that let me to walk in them. Amen. He will be their God, his God, and they will be my people. Praise God. I love that. I love that. Praise God. Sometimes you ask God, who are they people? <laughs> Praise God. I will be their God, his God, but there's something they got to do. They got to separate themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. My, my title tonight, time to come out of the world to enter into Christ. Praise God. Simple and easy. Time to come out of the world. The world means everything that's in the world. Praise God. Like Jesus Christ tells the disciple, praise God. I'm not from the world. I'm come from above. Praise God. Praise God. The world, the prophet, they type it as unbelievers. Everything the world doing is not you. You're not part of it. That's what I was, my pastor was saying about well, when you find your purpose. You don't mean what, I, what is it when you find your purpose. Yeah, you, when you find your purpose, you know who you are, where you come from, what you're doing here, and where you're going. That's why I find your purpose is. Therefore, now I don't bother who like me, who don't like you, who hate you, who don't hate you. When you find that, not everybody on earth can find that. How many believe that? Not because you're going to church, you go to school, you get education that make you know those questions. It takes God to reveal you those questions. Where you come from, where you going, who you are, what's your purpose? Not everybody got that question. School don't give you that. Whatever the world is doing out there, scientists don't give you that. Only person that can reveal you that is God. When you find that, you have no problem with nobody. You cannot be no bitterness. I, don't, I cannot hit for the chemo. I cannot, because I find that. Now I am working on it. Now I am pushing it. Now I want more of it to know better. Now I don't worry about who, what, anything. I'm focused on something. Now I know what to focus on when you have that question. Your purpose, why you here? Hallelujah. Everybody on earth should have question of that. Your purpose. Time to come out of the world and enter into what? A church into Christ. Christ is the word. Time you come out of the world and you enter into Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. He's the prophet message. And he says, the 17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, say the Lord, and touch not the unclean things. I will receive you and will be a father unto you. Hallelujah. That's God. He says, And ye shall be my son and daughter, say the Lord Almighty. Who said that? Hallelujah. Now it's God that says, You're going to be my daughter, my son, by doing this. But all along, I was, my question is, What should I do? The question since beginning, God got one part of him that he never changed. Come out. Amen. I find out. He find Abraham. Come out. He got Israel people. I choose you among all nations. Therefore, God, when he call you, he make you different. Amen. How many love that? Amen. How many believe that? Amen. You cannot be find God. You know what the word of God says and you stay the same. It cannot be. Therefore, you don't find the purpose of God yet. 
You just church. Sometimes you can fool yourself with church. You love church. You be church. You worship church. You got church, but not God. That doesn't mean when you got so much church, you got God. I'm preaching now. Praise God. That doesn't mean when you, you said, Brother Kendall, do you mean don't go to church? I don't say that. Sometimes you got too much church, you don't even got God. The, the Bible says, the prophet says, to know him is life. <laughs> Praise God. The prophet says, I will rather know. He says, even I don't know what the whole Bible says, but I know the author. <laughs> Praise God. When you know him, he's a different thing. Hallelujah. When you know God, not no church. You can be in church, I says. You can spend your life in church. You die in church. You never meet God. Right. Church, I got to let you know that. Amen. Church don't give you God. The prophet says, church help you to remain Christian. Amen. But church don't make you Christian. Praise right. God. I got three quotes here to read. I guess that's the one that's going to help me in the preaching. And everybody will find themselves what the prophet says. My pastor already preached that. His God says, Time to come out of the world and to enter into Christ. And the message the prophet come, The God who is rich in mercy. I was listening to it yesterday. The prophet says redemption got two parts on it. That's what redemption is all about. It got two parts. It's come out and enter into. Come out. Enter into something new. That's what it is. I come out. Haitian. I come unto the kingdom of God. I come out and what I was doing and come into something. Understand? I come out of Haitian culture and come in God culture. When you got to come out, everything you are come out. Your ambition, your ways, your everything got to come out. You got to come out, completely come out. That's what they, that's what they come out is. People say, think, oh, I live seven days Adventist. Now I'm a message church. No, that's not come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because there's a, we, we're going to do it. There's three exodus that happened. The first one was Moses coming out. Moses take the people out of Egypt. That's what we're doing. Sometimes we take people out of the world. I take you, they take you, the gospel take you out from your voodoo. The gospel take you out from your own life you live in. But the spirit, the only thing Moses cannot do, he cannot take Egypt, the spirit of Egypt from the people. Let up your hands for that. Hallelujah. That's what happened when you Haitian, Jamaican, Brazilian. You can come out from Brazilian to be in a message church, but the spirit of Brazilian still learn you. The spirit of Haitian still learn you. Because when you come out, everything got to come out. Your three rims got to come out. Amen. Hallelujah. Your spirit got to come out. Your body got to come out. Your soul got to come out. That's a complete come out. And there are, otherwise, you will find yourself between two opinions. Because when you come to God, it's a complete decision. You cannot make decision to follow Jesus Christ. Praise God, you're undecided. Praise God, an undecided person, praise God, cannot make decision. He's unstable in everything. I cannot this. When you come to God, you make complete decision. Life and death. That's what it is. If you're not there yet to do that, you're just a church member. Don't talk about you got God, you see God, you see. You're just playing yourself, the prophet says. Because, and the message called the prophet, I will give you the message for a second all. 
the prophet will, you will read it. Total separation from unbelief. The prophet talk about it. He said the whole purpose of God, he wants you to come out from everything. That's what he told the disciple. They even tell Jesus, I got my family to go to see. I got to take care of something. He says, no. Those that want to follow me, you can't go back to do anything else. That's hard. That's what it's hard for people to be Christian. There is somebody that talked to me the other day. They said, Brother Kenon, so I'm, I'm come to church. I said, I said, you can fool yourself with church for 50 years. That doesn't mean anything. But when you come to God, what it required it. Because everything God brings is against your nature. Yes, sir. Back up your hands for that. Everything God brings, everything God says, He against me. He against you. That's why you struggle. That's why you struggle with spirit. Because it's against you. That's why you cannot give up. It's against you. It's against the way your parents says. The way my culture says, the way I've been educated, the way I've been this, is against that. He made me against everything. Like Jesus Christ said, except a man be born again, so you cannot see the kingdom. Nicodemus says, since I've been born, I learned I this, I that. That, that, that man this. That man wants to be complete changing. Church. This is what church got today. 20 years, 40 years, 100 years, 200 years in church, people don't go nowhere. <laughs> because they never come out. They never come out. That's why we're going to bring today. My pastor already preached that. That's why we, we're preaching again. The prophet says we cannot be emphasized too much in the, in the uh, revelation. Because that's what we need. Come out. Come out of my idea. Come out of the way I am. Come out of who I am. Come out, I don't like people. Come out, I have bitterness. Come out, every, every ways. Come out, I need, I think I'm something. Come out of it. That's not easy. Come out. Come out of my style. You see, after all preaching, the prophet preaching since 1947, 1960s, Five people come to the prophet and they question an inch. Should I cut my hair? Should I wear pins? People come to the prophet. The prophet said, What? You guys been sitting here, you don't hear anything? In 1947, 1965, people still ask them, Should I cut my hair? Should I wear pins? Should I wear long sleeves? You don't get anything. When you come to God, your styles change. Amen. Am I preaching now? Amen. Yes, Papa. If I'm a boy, I cannot imitate Buju Benton. No. Am I preaching now? Amen. I cannot imitate any style. No. I cannot wear my pins the way the guys wear their pins. That's why I'm coming out. Right. I cannot do what the world says. Amen. I'm completely. I cannot wear pins if you are young. You against the grain. That's why when you become Christian is you come out of what you used to do. What they do when you cannot do it. Amen. You cannot have fun that they got fun there where they are. Right. Praise the Lord. You got to understand deliverance and liberty is not a freedom. Amen. The deliverance and liberty God set you free but that doesn't mean you got freedom. Like Paul says, I can eat all things, uh -huh. but because of your sick. Yes. Amen. Find out deliverance and liberty are not freedom. Amen. That's why Paul says, I'm a prisoner of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You were prisoner of the world. Amen. Now, when, God, when you come to Christ, you become prisoner of the world. Uh, let clap your hands for that. You said, but I can all. What? You were prisoner. You were prisoner of the world. I can do whatever. I can be my own. 
I can be deep in. I can do whatever I want. I don't have nobody to tell me. Like people says, I don't have the boss. Like woman says today, I'm the boss. I make the money. I can do this. I can do that. I can do this. I can, I can have my nails long. I can have the all kind uh, high heel. I can. But when you got a question, this is the war. When you come in Christ, he tell you no high heel. Because the kingdom come with culture. The kingdom come down with a culture. Amen. Hallelujah. It's to be the prophet says or not to be. Hallelujah. Are you in or are you out? Right. You cannot be between. Amen. You cannot play both. Amen. And the devil know when you play both. Amen. That's why when you come to Christ, there's a lot of all of you that you need to let go. Praise God. Now, brother Gibe. Even you said you don't like Brother Kenol. Brother Kenol cannot act the same way. That's coming out. I have to show you love of God. Coming out require a lot of changes. You cannot be your own anymore. That's why you're not coming out. You just come to church. That's what I'm telling you. This is the gospel. This is what the gospel is all about. If you don't reach that yet, you just play in church. I don't care how much you said you believe the message, how much you said you got born by them, you just lying. You need the spirit of the message. The spirit of the message is love. The Bible, the prophet said, the whole Bible is a love letter to his wife. Amen. The message is love. It's the love of God, the capstone love. That's what the message is all about. People take the message, it's another religion. The message is not another Baptist. It's not another seven days Adventist. It's not another assembly of God. That's what people think the message is. The message is another kingdom that have a, a, a new, uh, praise God, a new culture, a new system. Um, I'm in it or you're not in it. Hallelujah. The prophet says he went in a place called Finland. He find out a lot of guys, women got to come to give them with a bath, with a towel, and everything. And then they come to Brother Branham too. The woman come while he's naked to come to give him something. Oh, no, 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 no. He said, oh, no, Brother Branham, that's the way it is. That's the way Finland doing. You guys, and you got nurse in, in, in the hospital and everything. Well, that's the way the woman. He said, no. You find out every nation got the spirit. But when you're in this kingdom, you cannot have that spirit. When you're coming out, that spirit must come out of you. He says, I'm not American, but I'm a, see, you have a, he says, I'm a heavenly citizen. When you are a heavenly citizen that got nothing to Haitian, that got nothing to American, that got nothing to Brazilian. This is a different person. That's why you struggle to yourself. Because you so struggle to your nature, to your tradition, to where you come from. You, you cannot come to Christ. That's a difference when you come to church, you come to Christ. Don't mix that up. People say, I go to church. I know church. I know this. But do you know God? Right. Hallelujah. This is what we're preaching here, church. Moses... Get the people out from Egypt, but he didn't get the spirit of Egypt out of them. You see, that's why they were against him. That's why they bring back the old things, the statues, because the spirit still in them. You see, people coming out of the world, the spirit of the world still in them. They still love parties. Am I preaching now? Like I promise for the Lord Jesus Christ. They still love the style. They still love dress. God, how Beyonce, Ariana dress. That's not your fashion anymore. Amen. You cannot copy of them. They got inspired by the devil to dress the way they dress. The devil dressed them Amen. to attract what men. Those dress is a sexy dress. To attract. You cannot be a Christian and then you put sexy dress to attract men. Amen. That's not your style. They're not preaching now. That's what we're talking about coming out. That's why people come in church and left church. 
Because they will church their way. It cannot be your way. Your way got to die. We preaching the message now. Coming out. Coming out. Coming out. Coming out, people. Coming out. Coming out, things. Coming out. My family don't want it. I'm coming out. That's the Lord. Who don't want it? I'm coming out. All my friends that are with me are coming out. You don't like the idea of coming out. So it is, church. Coming out. I know it's hard sometimes. But you have to do it. Either you accept it or you reject it. That's what I'm just preaching. I preach before. You got to accept it. If the kingdom come to me, I say, I accept it. The prophet says, it's not a question. I believe it. I like it. But do you accept it? Before you step in, in the kingdom, uh, they tell you the whole condition. You have to say, I'm accepting. Yeah. Am I preaching now? Yeah. Am I preaching now? There's the list of Christianity when it comes before you. Sister, are you going to dress the way? They, are you going to? There, there's a court dress. There's a dress code. There's a dress way. There's a tail way. If you don't accept the dress, get out. Because if you call by God, you, all be, you got the spirit to accept it. Because that's a new kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. Like Philip says. We are a heavenly citizen. We belong to another kingdom. Yes. What's the kingdom? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the whole package for you. To tell you what to do. He is a whole package. He includes your salvation. Your healing. Your everything. The Holy Spirit got all the whole package. You cannot take a part of the Holy Spirit. You cannot be in speaking in tongue and then you don't want the rest. You're going to live like Christian. Am I preaching now? You don't want to be in a preacher and then you don't want to accept to have a love of God. You don't want to be this and then you leave, you leave the other. You got the whole package. Praise God. The whole package. It says, come out. That message, the God of whose which and mercy, what he says, the redemption has two different parts. Coming out and first you have to come out. <laughs> I got to forget Brother Milton, I'm a Jamaican. That's your first witness. When you go in U.S. citizens, what they say? They say, we know you're Jamaican. Now you are U.S. You cannot say that I want to keep Jamaican and keep... Uh, Even, even physical, even the world that the way it is, what about God? Hallelujah. You want to live to two nationality in the kingdom of God? Amen. Am I preaching now? Amen. You want to live Amen. the American citizen don't want you to live to two nationality and you want to you wanna be Am I preaching now? Hallelujah, you have to win us one Amen. to get one. Amen. Amen. Therefore now if American go in a war, if I go to Haiti, I'm not going for Haitian. I got to be against Haitian now. Am I preaching now, Noel? Am I preaching now? Am I preaching now? That's a hard thing. That's a hard thing. That's a hard thing. Now I'm belong to another nation. I renounce Haitian. I cannot fight for Haitian no more. I cannot defend it. You, you want to come to serve God with two nationality, to two spirit, to two ways? It cannot work. You won't go nowhere. You are really jogging in one spot. You take you going somewhere, you're not going anywhere. You become a somebody that says, I'm in church. Someday you fired up. Someday you become lukewarm. You never got it right. Because you're living in two. You got two faces. You're in and out. You're in and out. You, you're confused. Exactly, my sister. You got to get confused. That's why everything gets confused to you. I don't understand it. I don't see it. I don't, you don't understand. It's usually a problem. You never come out. There's a real problem. You don't see it. It's you. 
until you come out. I got to come out completely. That's what it is. Coming out. Says, you coming out and what? First, you have to come out. Some people want to bring the world in with them. You cannot bring that baggage. The way you used to do your nails, you got to cut it. Am I preaching? Now, let's have your hands for that. That's your first lesson. That's your first devil. He become a devil that hold you back. Your blessing. As long as the word of God tells you something to do, you don't do it. You, you give the prophet, you give the devil all rights to stay in you to make you confused. That's the word. Because the word of God requires you cut it off. Leave it on. That's what it is. First, I don't bring the world with me. Praise God. Sometimes people, I don't know why, people step in church, they don't even know their dress code. The COD. You cannot go in a church, in a job, you don't know what's the code. What they say, the COD, the code, conduct of? Oh, exactly. You come in there and they think you don't know. People come in the message, they don't know. That's what I tell you. You need the spirit of the message to believe the message, to stay in the message. That's why they cannot stay. Because if you look at the message, it makes you a perfect Christian, a perfect believer. But if you don't take that spirit, you want to take the common church. You ain't going anywhere. First, I, when you enter in something, any society, any institution, I have to know what the requirement. Right. Hallelujah. Right. When I got in the message, I said, what the prophet says. Right. They said to me, listen, church ages. But my pastor tell me, what I can all, your first lesson, go to church ages book. Right. Go to the COD. They give me the two books COD. Right. It used to be a, like a purple color when they first color. Right. Now it come out like a brown color. That, the purple color was the first one I know. Yes. And I sit down and I make sure I say, wow, that's what all the prophets say. Oh, but I cannot, cannot be a Buju Bunton. But I cannot, cannot cut his hair that way. But I cannot, cannot make it be like the, the, the guys in the NBA doing. But I cannot, cannot walk like this. Yeah, it was up, man. But I cannot, cannot do it anymore. But I, gotta, but I cannot, cannot be there. But I cannot, cannot sing that song, give me the weed, good sense weed anymore. Those songs are not my song. Your song got to sing. Your language got to sing. Hallelujah. This is coming out. Coming out. Now you're coming out to serve God now. Now you can boldly go before. Hallelujah. Behind the veil. I have to know my language got to change. I cannot curse people. I cannot say F word. I cannot be talking like that guy talking. This is all things. The, the COD, the code they tell me. I cannot get mad at people like somebody can get mad. Like you see what my, my pastor, my pastor. Anybody that got that, that guy died next day. But my pastor, the way it is right now, even that guy cut his, hey, he got to let go. Tell God, the prophet said, you pray for that guy to change his spirit. This is a hard thing now. When somebody do you wrong, now you're going to pray for that person. This is, the, this is the Christianity. This is the entire. This is coming out the way you are. If Kimo don't talk to me, I have to go to Kimo to talk to him. Kimo, how you doing? This is Christianity. When the Christianity starts working in you, Amen. if Kimo don't talk to me, I don't talk to Kimo either. You're not there yet. I have to, the prophet said, it's not what the church don't like you, it is, but show, praise God, Christianity in you. Right. Show you Christian. Amen. Even if the whole church is not Christian, but you show you Christian, the prophet says. Amen. This is the thing we cannot do. But if you go with the flow, people are not Christian, I'm not Christian either. Right. So all you, none of those gone anywhere. Amen. That means you're not Christian. Right. Coming out for them. Those are spirits that have been in you since you've been born. You raise your environment. You're consumed by all this. You become that. 
you, you've been in uh, 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 the environment and free us by hearing, hearing, hear this, hear that, hear this, hear that. Like I always tell my Haitian people, everything here, because we've been born under the dictatorship, there's a spirit of fear. Don't go this. Don't do this. Don't eat with this guy. Don't. We've been living with some fear. Don't, 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 don't. I'll tell my wife, we're not Haitian. We're Christian. We cannot believe with the fear. Praise God. We live with faith. Faith overcome the world. Don't, don't do, don't do, don't do, don't do, don't go there. Don't, 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 don't. Be careful. You know, I said, how come you always see, you always see negative. You always see bad. You never see good. I always tell my wife, you always see bad. Don't you ever see me millionaire? If you don't have that. I said, if you don't have that dream yet, you don't have any dream yet. Why is all bad dream all the time? Can that dream come to you? Am I preaching now like a couple hands for the Lord Jesus Christ? Your mentality. So raise up with the negative thing. You bring negative. You produce. Wow. You produce what you raising for. You consuming by your family, your environment. People telling you, don't do this. Hate this guy. Hate this. You raising with that. You raise with bitterness. That's why bitterness come on you. You reason with so much negative wow on you. They become you. They consume you. You need to come out of that. Break the chain. Loosen the chain. Because you are in the chain of thought against. You loosen that chain. Get out. I'm in Christ now. I cannot see it the same way anymore. You need a new mindset to live the word of God. Hallelujah. That clap your hands for the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come out. Come out from Africa. Come out from Haiti. Come out. God bless you in Him. Hallelujah. He said to continue. You bring the world with you. But you got to come out of the world to enter into Christ. You have to what? All the things that you unbelief. The thing you didn't believe, I don't believe pastor. I don't believe church. I don't believe there's a good person in church. Everybody says, there's nobody doing good in church. Those are unbelief in you. You come with that negative mentality, you never be Christian. You don't trust nobody, you don't trust pastor, you don't trust this. I'm preaching now. You don't trust preach. Yes, brothers, you don't trust sister, you don't trust pastor, you don't trust ministry, you don't trust nobody. You don't respect none of them. Hallelujah. Because that does unbelief bring disrespect. Because you have you got disrespect. Spirit come in you. When the Bible says, trust in the Lord. Amen. Trust in me. Amen. Hallelujah. In the time of trouble, Amen. I will rescue you. Amen. And you will glorify me. Amen. Consult the Lord in all things. You make what God brings for you cannot help you. Because you don't trust in it. Because you don't trust, you become disrespectful. You talk bad to do it. And what God put for you to help you, the prophet says, sometimes God, God hide, reveal himself in simplicity. He says, sometimes God put what they have in front of you because you don't like their help, you never receive the help. Because it's too simple. God hide himself and reveal himself in simplicity. You don't like the person God put in front of you. Because of that, you disrespect that person. That's why you go nowhere. You say there's nothing in church. And people left church. Not they left church because of the ways. That's the way you grow up. You don't want to give it up. You don't want to change. 
Hallelujah. What? To enter into what? You are talking about that faith. How could you enter into the faith? You are still the same. You see? Oh, I got faith in God and I love God. You don't love God. The Bible says if you don't love one another, how could you love God? You are a lie. That's the problem. See, sometimes because you are not, you're not coming out, lie spirit stay in you. You are living in a denial. Praise God. You, you make you live in, the unbelief make you live in a denial. You are asking me, oh, I love God. Any drug dealer in the street, any killer, murder, ask them if they don't love God. Everybody love God. But that don't stop him killing people. <laughs> Am I preaching now? Well, what's the quietness? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what I'm telling you, it is coming out. There cannot be one thing in your there cannot be one thing in your way. See? He says, to really have genuine faith, you must absolutely what? That's contrary. Behind. Now, you're talking to Pastor Edmund, to the minister, you tell me you're a Christian, God talk to you. You think you can lie to us? <laughs> you, you think you are a big liar, we don't know this. We don't see the spirit in you already. That's a problem you have. Because the spirit in you so much, it consumes you. You come in front of the people, you think they don't see you. Yes, we see you plenty. We see you big. We know you're not converted yet. But we don't say you're not the child of God, but you are the guy that was the guy that was in the cemetery that got the wild spirit in him. That was living like an animal. You still have a spirit of animal in you. That's why the spirit animal. I see the animal upset and instantly. That's why you become an animal. The prophet said, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're acting like animal. Am I preaching now? You be, you, if, you don't, if you don't try to get the Holy Spirit, you will be an animal. Anybody will be an animal. That's why when they talk to you, you're almost ready to cut the head off. Is the animal spirit make you like that? And you think you're ready. That's a problem. That's a denial spirit. The devil think you're okay with it. That's why that's the lie the prophet said that he come in the last day. The lie he come he give you Eve, he can do the same lie, make you live on Christian life and tell you you are Christian. Tell you you're okay. Am I preaching now? Tell you you're okay. Tell you you got God when you don't have God. That's a big lie. The prophet called it, it's a D lie. He make you live. Amen. You're not acting like a Christian, he make you, you got God. Yes. God talk to me. Yes. God with me. you lying. How could he be with you, live, let you live the life, the prophet says. Right. The prophet says, praise God, he will manifest. He said, he never sent somebody that he have his spirit in him, and then he's not transform you. He got to make that spirit be with you. He said, when the spirit hears his word, he will admit it, the word. He will be obedient to the word if he's a God. But you've been hearing message over message over message, and you tell us you got God. We don't got God yet. You still got the devil spirit in you. So many messages we preach, you still remain the same. And you're not even ashamed to tell us you got God. That's a problem. That's why you make the world scare you. How many love God? Amen. Let's go to the second one. I told you just three quotes. A hidden life in Christ, 1955. How many love God? Amen. A hidden life coming out. Time to coming out, church. Coming out. Coming out of, of your unbelief now. Coming out. You got to believe something. If you don't believe something, you got to believe anything. That's why people believe the, uh, the um, voodoo priest. Because you don't believe something. You have to believe something. You got to make decision on something in life. When I come with the message, like my pastor says, this is my life. This is where I want to die. Sister Vivian told me the same thing. This is my life. You sell out. If you don't reach that point to see yourself like that in the message, you're not there yet. Am I preaching now? You might be coming here, let me observe, let me see what's going on. If I can stay, if I cannot stay. You're not there yet. 
You're not a Christian. Let me see. You cannot let me see in God. God is not a guy that plays a game like you play Nintendo, you play PlayStation in at home all the time. You don't have time for God. God is not a guy that plays a game like that. God is a yes or no. It's not maybe. Do you want me? Do you want the kingdom? Yes. I, I don't know. I, I will see if I can cut this. And that. No, 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 no. God, no, 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 nonsense like that. Do you want me? Yes. Okay. Let's go. Let's move in. That's God for you. Not I don't know. Let me think. Let me. No, no, no. Not a God. You playing game. God not between decision. He's not maybe decision. I want God and the message. I want it. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how it is. No matter, now you said, Brother Kenol, when I make that decision, what happens? No matter what it takes, your decision will bring you to your destination. Because you make that decision, you firm in that decision, God obligates you to honor your testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To honor. Amen. To make you stay in a time of trouble. Right. Because you make decision to follow me. Amen. No matter what, life and death. Amen. Therefore, when death comes, Praise God. God can remove the death and keep you your testimony alive. Because you show you serious. You don't, today I want it, tomorrow I don't want it. Today Pastor Edmund is my pastor, tomorrow is not my pastor. You're playing game. You ain't going anywhere in your life. But if you cannot make decision, you will never make decision in anything in your life. You will be unstable everywhere you go. Mark my word. It's thus say the Lord. That's the prophet word. You will never make decision in anything in life. Hallelujah. A hidden life in Christ. He preached in 1955. He started, he says, what a beautiful picture it is today of a consecrated life to ooh. Yes, what a beautiful picture is today of a consecrated life. Who? That's what I tell you come and serve in God. I bet you so many of you, not even, the prophet says we got two bodies. We got the physical, you got the spiritual. I can bet my whole wallet here, nobody can answer that question. You don't read listening to the prophet every day in your life. But everybody here eat every day. Raise your hands. Do everybody eat every day? The prophet said, if you can feed the physical body like this, what about the spiritual body? My prophet is a man that reads the Bible every day. He said, that's why you get stoned. He said, you read your Bible, you listen to the prophet, you listen to the word. You spend your time, you're so busy, you don't even have one ta time to read a verse on the Bible. And then you said, you got God. How could you be have a consecrated life? That's why the spirit got priority in you. For those that have gifts, shown. For you that got gift, especially you that got gift. If you don't consecrate yourself to be in the world, devil will take over you anytime. And he will create people who are on you to give you hard time. That's how they think. He knows you, your body is weak. Because the, you got to understand the prophecy. You got two dogs. The one you feed the most, that's the one that wins. The white one is the Holy Spirit. The black one is my flesh. If every time I'm watching TV, I'm playing Nintendo, I'm playing this, I'm playing that, I'm expecting to be Christian, you cannot be Christian. Amen. You will be a yo your guy. Amen. And you cannot be trusted in the kingdom of God. Right. As simple as that. Your life requires consecration, devotion. You think it's easy for me? Thank to God now, I'm a self-employed. I work myself, create time for God. Because the first things, I clap your hands for that. Because the problem is, help me let you slow that. The devil don't want you to know God. You'll be busy making money, making this, making that, making that. When you're sick, making money, go to work. Show me you go to work. I should come. That's what I, when I know you sick, I should go in your bed where in your hospital bed. Say, go to work. Go get busy. That's what I should tell you. Because all along they tell you, put God first. You, am I preaching now? 
You take a was a game. Now when your health that make you strong to make that money, get out now. You out of it now. <laughs> you didn't know that before. That's what they've been telling you. All along you've been doing good. It's God that was wrong on you. All God, what what I can all God is God. Amen. God put Master Edmund for me. Yes. You got to say that. It's not people. It's not denomination or God on the air. God the air. No, no. God put people and He put people in your way to help you. Amen. Hallelujah. There are things people do for you. It's not them. It's God. Amen. You got to understand it. But God need that person for you. You got to own the vessel that God used. Hallelujah. 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 That's, what, that's what happened to you. When God sent an angel in your way to help you, it's because he loves you. Yes. The only way he can, he can help you is somebody that's close to you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what he's talking about, kinsmen with him. Somebody got to close to you. That was your family. Amen. It's not, oh God, do it for me. Reject the Pastor Edmund. He used Pastor Edmund. God knows this time going to come to you, like they tell Esther. You come to be queen for this moment. Amen. God appointed a pastor to you in this moment. He knows you're going to be in a need. This is the man that God. Amen. They are thank God for you. He will do it already, but He went for this time. God already know, keep on going, I got accident. God already know, you're going to be in the need, but I'm going to pray to the pastor in that time. Amen. And in due time. Amen. Trust me, in time of trouble, Amen. I will deliver you. Amen. In Psalm 15, 15, he says, how are you going to deliver you? He's going to place somebody to be there for you when you need to get access to it. Hallelujah. We're not denomination here. Hallelujah. He says, that's how it is. Once enter consecrate life, you need that. I know he's, he's tough. That's what you need. I spent one year since March. March is going to be one year. I'm supposed to see doctor every three months. Again, one year, I'm without doctor. And I got diabetes. And I'm taking this. You think, what can keep me, but I can only live? Sister Nades is in, is in this year. Can a, a diabetes person spend one year and never fall down and he can be strong like this? It's not what I know in herbalist. Is what God do first. <laughs> the prophecy. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what I give him glory first. I call him down. I preach that. I said, if in the time of Israel, they've spent 40 years in the wilderness without a doctor, you appointed a doctor called Moses. And no nurse, nothing, no medication, nothing, and they still go healthy. So short today. Yeah. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and for I call him in the scene. Same boys that the prophet said, when you call him in the scene, he will come down and ask you what you want. I say, I want my health. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what it is. Hallelujah. The prophet says there's nothing wrong with the doctor. He said God used them to give you medication. But the healing part is not come from them. That's why when they, when they give you medication, they give you, they say, I don't know. They, they, they say they reach their hands. They reach where they're supposed to be. They limit. But the rest going to be in the, That's why chemo. The doctor don't heal you. They are thinking, give you medication. You don't know what the outcome going to be. The outcome is in the God's hands. Or you stay crippled, or you stay disabled, or you continue to be the way you are. Restore you back. Amen. That is up to God. Hallelujah. Doctor cannot answer that. Amen. When he reaches limit with his medication, that's it for you. Sometimes he says, I don't know. There's patient, chronic disease, whatever. He says, I don't know. He's got to step in. to say, I'm going to change the situation. I'm going to make 
Kim will walk again. Amen. I'm going to make Sister Flores back again. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I honor my pastor would. Nobody will die Hallelujah. under my ministry. Amen. You see, Sister Flores, you got to respect your pastor. You know God honor his word. It's not what you get. Sometimes it's me. I have nothing. It's what he says. God obligated because you want this ministry. Anything Pastor Edmund says. When God bless him and his gift is in it. When you can recognize the gift. You got the blessing. Don't take it personal to you. Oh God can talk to me too. Don't be like dating that. And that's what they do. When God appointed a man. He's the man that he's using. You don't take over. If you receive the blessing. Because you're obedient under that ministry. Obedience will bring you all your blessing. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't, don't puff off yourself. Huh? Don't take you something. You got something. You got nothing. Amen. Am I preaching now? Yes. You got nothing. Yes. But I cannot got nothing. Yes. That's your mistake. Yes. Because that's how God can communicate with you through Pastor Edmund. He obligated to honor his word. Therefore, anybody that believes in his ministry couldn't die with the uh, COVID-19. But then, well, that's what it is. Amen. Amen. My preaching new word now. Amen. We're not denomination. Oh. Hallelujah. He says, once enter into with Christ, dead to what? Dead. That's your die you need. Yes. I, but I cannot need to die to himself. Like Paul says, I die daily. Yes. I need to die to myself. What hinder me to fellowship? What hinder me to love you? I need to die to that spirit. Yes. Kill that spirit. Why we to Kill that spirit. Yes. You kill that spirit. Amen. That's why you die. You die daily. Because you got so much demon in you. Amen. You die daily. Every day I'm killing a demon. Yes. Proud demon. Hatred demon. Yes. Bitterness demon. I got to die. Yes. That's why Paul says I die daily. But I cannot use to do this here. He used to fight when you say something. No, he back up now. He relax himself. He chill. Hallelujah. He knows when, what, where to do something. He got the, hallelujah, common sense. Yes, sir. When, what, where. That doesn't mean you make a mistake, but you know you make mistake, you repeat. Yes. You die daily. You die daily. What cause you don't make, don't repeat, you die daily, you die. You say, I want to repeat for that. Amen. And the prophet says, when you are a child of God, you do something wrong, the Holy Spirit will talk to you. Amen. I don't know if you never see that. I've seen it myself. Amen. I feel uncomfortable. Yes. Even in prayer, even in approaching God's words. If you feel okay, anything, you do something wrong. The prophet said, the Holy Spirit check you all the time. When you're wrong, go do it. Hallelujah. If I walk by God and only I don't shake his hand, something tell me why I do that. What my attention. Something. Click, 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 click. There's an alarm. Come to me. Go back. I got to go back. Boy and only. God bless you. Sorry about that. I just, I just walked by you. I didn't see you. But if you, if you feel okay, everything, you slap people, you walk and then you don't feel anything, something wrong. You hate people and then you, you curse people. And then you tell me you got God, you got the Holy Spirit. Come on, you, you bluffing yourself here. That's what it is. Said, what is it? Hid, where am I? Yep. Hid away with God and the veil drop down one down. And all the world shut up. All the world shut up. You know what happened to the young girl? How many remember what Brother Branham tell the young girl? The young girl, Brother Branham pray, I believe she baptized. Brother Branham pray for her, she baptized and everything. She used to go to the party all the time, club party, having a good time, club party. <laughs> and then um, the sister for himself, there was a, you know, that's why, that's why when, you, when you die, that's how you die. That's how you know you die. Because there's a music you love. You, oh my goodness, you know, you can throw your food away to listen to that, to dance. Why, Brother Milton, that reggae music, Bob Marley thinks I cannot miss it. That part, 
this is my deal here. That girl used to got that party. She used to be a great party, crazy party girl. Because she not die. That's why when you, when you die for something, when you die for things that were on you, you have to stay away from the environment. Influence. Yes. Even your family that talking about it, you don't want to be associated with them. That's why, that's why, that's why it is coming out going to be. You don't want to even speak to family that were on you. That's why you make that devil come back in you again. Because you could associate with people that are going to feed you back with that devil that you've been dealing with from your subconscious. You already clean out, slang out. Then you will bring back again. People can bring back devil in you again. That's why you stay away from them. Amen. She become converted now. She walk in the prophecy by the club. She heard the beautiful song she liked. Uh -huh. uh, she said she so much like it, she didn't even know when she already in the arm of a guy. She come to Brother Branham because the conscience come back in to her. That's how the Holy Spirit is. Yes. When you do wrong things, you, you might do things in hidden, yes. but the devil will expose you. Hallelujah. That's one thing you don't know, church. People say, I'm doing this, but I don't see. That's why you got to be honest any, anywhere you are. That's right. You got to be honest. You got to bring right every time. You got to be in right every time. Amen. You steal the money in the corner. Pastor Edmund doesn't see you. Nobody see you, but the devil see you. God see you, and the devil gonna expose you. Yes. And a lot of people do things. Oh, I'm gonna in the party. Pastor Edmund don't know it. Oh no, you lying to yourself. Devil gonna expose you. <laughs> he gonna make somebody that coming out of nowhere to see you say that boy yes. and open the tabernacle. Yes. I was in the party with him yesterday. Right. Party night and then tomorrow church and the choir singing ooh like an angel. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, my brother. Yes. The girl finds herself in the arm of the guy. He comes to the prophet, he cries. <laughs> prophet, what's happened? The prophet let her listen. What happened? She says, I was, he says, I stop when you hear the music. Say, what? You make a mistake. You shouldn't stop. Because when you are near it, when you are dead with something, you got to stay away from it. Yes. I was a man that liked uh, Jamaican music. Yes. But there was a guy in my job, every time he played Jamaican music, I stay away from him. Yes. Especially the best Buju Burnton I like. Yes. I have to stay away. I don't want to hear it from my body not to dance. <laughs> because I just don't want to be close. He asked me, why well, can all I'm here, you just stay uh, sometimes I go in the bathroom just to stay for a while because there's no work to do. And then he listened to his music. Everybody trapping, having fun with him. Because I don't want to hear it anymore. Right. I want it dead. Yes. Because I don't want to associate whoever listened to it. Right. That's how you dead. Amen. She said she make a mistake, she stop. That's the problem. Yes. When they pray for you for something, you make a mistake, you take your ease to listen to people talk again. Uh -huh. That's why the devil came back on you. The bitterness come back on you. Same people that against the ministry talk to you. What good do you think they're going to tell them? They resurrected the devil that we already killed. Yeah. Hallelujah. They resurrected the devil we already killed in you. You can resurrect the devil in you. Because he's already dead. Hallelujah. Says, then Christianity and religion become a pleasure to every believer. Today, people have enough religion to make them what? Knowing that they ought to do this, they are trying to escape hell. Well, if that's the way I feel about it, brother, I don't know what I will do. Oh. Get in with 
That's what we need to do. Get in the word. <laughs> That's what you need to do. Come on out. Hallelujah. It says the last one. How many love God? Amen. Praise God. We bring you the thunders. Praise God. There's the last one called the seal of the Christ 1955. The seal of the Christ and I'm done. Praise the Lord. The seal of the Christ. That's why God says there's no agreement. There's no relationship. Praise God. When I come to the message, all my old friends, I have to leave them. Praise God. There are people that used to do, give me $2,000. I don't have to, buy, to give them back money, Kimo. I don't have to be broke. But I have to left those friends. I stay in the street for three months. But I have brothers that can help me. Give me a lot of money. But I have to reject them. Because they didn't want this ministry. I have I, I said all, all these things. But Hamilton was witness that. I have to sleep, sleep in the street. Three months. In the cold time. Just to refuse them. To reject them. 17 of them. To reject all of them. Their money in them. Because they bought me a car already for $2,000. They do everything for me. But when I got that problem, if I call them, they will rescue me immediately. But I don't want to hear what they're going to say. Because that I have to separate them. Like Paul says, I have to accept misery yes. to get Christ. <laughs> There's a point in your life. I don't care how the person can help you. But if it's not help, not going to lead you to something good. You have to reject it. Uh, to separate themselves, the Paul says, to accept misery, to get Christ. Sometimes he required that sacrifice in your life. But it is God. You got to come in out. The seal of the Christ. He says, some people come to church just for the emotion part. Dancing, shouting, spirit speaking, falling on the floor, emotion. I used to get that a lot. Praise God. Oh, good music today. Good preaching today. The prophet says, good preaching. He said, yeah, he got nothing wrong in that. He got to be there. But when you come for that only, he ain't going to take you anywhere. Emotion part. I love this song today. I love the preaching today. Pastor Edmund, you preach good. Like Pastor Edmund always says, it's not preach good, what did he do for you? Am I praying? Clap your hands. It's not the question, I preach good. What did he do for you? If he keep you, remain there where you are, that means that preaching do nothing for you. you just mocking him. The prophet said, that's a way of mocking the ministry. You mock me. You mock Pastor Edmund. That preaching today is good. What did he do for you? You remain the same and the preaching was good. Or the prophecy was good, but you remain the same. That's where you lie to yourself. He's living in a denial. Hallelujah. Amen. Says, some people come to church just to sing. You ever see musicians? They come to play and that's set. They go. When the preaching come in, they go outside talking. I'm preaching now. Amen. They don't want to hear the preaching part. Once they finish to sing, once they finish to play music, okay, that's it. We do that part. That's not your part yet. You do, do, do a part of the service. The preaching is a part of the service. The pay tithes is a part of the service. The worship God is a, a part of the service. The prophet said the whole thing is a complete thing of the service. You sing, you go, you good. You play music, you good. That's not all part of the service. You do a part. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, some people come in church just to enjoy what? Hey, preach it. Look at, look at, look at, look at the church. Enjoy what? Oh, you see, not me that said, the prophet. Let me read it together. Baby. Praise God. Maybe I will be on the same page. That's all right. He doesn't have anything against it. 
He said, some people come to church and join the church just to... You know what it is. <laughs> you see, and believe me, each, there's a lot of people here there for that. You see, that, that's why I expose spirit. Amen. There's a lot of people for that. Amen. And they don't want to tell you coming out of it. You know. They know themselves. You know what it is. That there the song says, you know what it is. You know yourself sometimes. The prophet says, you already know yourself. You don't mean, need me to judge you. Make themselves a little better name and they I'm a Christian. Am I preaching now? I go to church. It's a church name. Oh, that sister in the job is a, is a that brother in the job is a he's a Christian. Nebo knows and nothing inside you, really. No love of God inside you. No Christ inside you. Just show off. Put one robe, long crest, and put people you Christian, and inside you there's no Christianity. The day they step in your toes, you can slap somebody to, to the ground. Come on, don't bluff yourself. That's why you need to come out. Some come to church sincerely, but don't never have a. I love, that's what I bring the quote. Yes, he's not brother King, all that says. <laughs> They've been going to church there. You said 40 years in the message, God never taught you. 50 years, 100 years, and you still that day? Oh my God. Never touch, got the touch from God. That's what I'm telling you. So now you fool yourself with church. No God. You loaded with church. That's why one time I, 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 I reached that point in my life. I was in church. I was loaded with church. I know my Bible from cover to cover, but that don't help me. Hallelujah. That's what I left church one time. I said, you know, church is a ritual things and everything. I don't want to be part of it until God brings me to this message. Amen. I know what serving God is all about. I don't know what church is about. I know what serving God is all about. Amen. That's what made me to learn how what serving God is. Hallelujah. That made me can say that the sisters are not what I used to be. I'm not what I want to be. But I know for a fact I'm not what I used to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Because in my neighborhood is to bring a Bible in my hands. He going to church. I'm a church person. I'm a church. Saturday, I got my Saturday Bible. I'm a church person. I'm a Sabbath. Hallelujah. I'm a seven days Adventist. That's what I used to be. And a lot of people thinking I was something and I was nothing. Hallelujah, like Paul says. But when God calls a man, no man can come to me except my father. Draw him. It's not you that call yourself. It's God that called you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let clap your hands for that. He called you for a purpose. When God called you for a purpose, when you come, when I come and open the tabernacle, my first question, I ask God, what my purpose? Yes, you say, what well, I can all, Pastor Edmund, put you as an assistant, but that's not my purpose. That's a, that's a benefit of my purpose. <laughs> but to be a son of God, to have the power, to have the Holy Ghost, to belong to the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why you know, want to know your purpose, what you call for. You call for to know who you are, where you're going, where you come from, what you're doing here. Who am I? That's what I love. I love that song. Who am I, Lord? Who am I, Lord? When I find I'm a son of God, now I can come down, call God. I need you. I want you. I need the blessing. Coronavirus cause. I say, God, bring in the scene. Come in the scene here. I bring him in the scene. I devoted my life. I pray every day. I read my Bible every day. I consecrate. I said, devil, the devil says, if you take the word of God and rest God, blessing will come in your house. You come in church, you never read the Bible, you never listen to the prophet. Once in a while you do it, you expect God blessing. He ain't going to bless you. 
You tell Brother Kenol, is your house strong? It's not my house strong, but the God I bring in my house, make it stronger. He said, if your wife give problem, he bless God. He's not even giving problem, but I have enough power to control that devil. To change her mind when I, put, when I call God. Because every day you will get a trowel. You're not going to spare from trowel. Not because you bless and you everything. Persecution will stay with her. Persecution can come from your family, your family, your wife, your husband, your this. But if you're not consecrated yourself, if you're not loaded with God, you cannot face that. There's a time you need to load it yourself with God. Not with church, but with God. And then to praise God to abase that devil that in your wife or in your husband. But if none of you not up, both of us going to be like a wild, wild animal in the house. Am I preaching now? Somebody got to give themselves. Or both of us. The prophet says, I never see a family that stay in prayer that can separate. That does say the Lord. If your house always have problem, it's because one of you not consecrate themselves. And both of you is wrong. Don't blame the church. Don't blame you. I will leave it. Don't blame me. Don't blame the pastor. Don't blame the message. You need to consecrate yourself. You got to understand you in the battle. As long as you in that flesh, you in the battle. That battle requires consecration. You cannot be loose to the devil. Every day you may put yourself in devotion. Listen to a message. You eat every day. Read the Bible. Praise God. The body don't want it. I know your body don't want it. But you're busy to go to work. You can do 16 hours. You don't, don't have a time. And you expect to get God. How you get the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit will enforce you to do that. If you got Praise God. God more willing to give you the Holy Spirit than you to receive it. Praise God. He requires sacrifice. You cannot play Nintendo. You cannot play PlayStation. You cannot play a game. Go watch Jet Li. Watch everything. Expect God will come down in that house. It cannot be. Your TV should play God message. Every day. Your house should listen to prophet message from now on. Your radio should play that. And a praise God, a consecrate life. If you cannot pray, you hear the message. If you cannot read the message, you read your Bible. Or you hear a message that we preach here. Bring the atmosphere. Keep your room with the atmosphere. Any devil that in your wife and you will go away. Just the word of God. A brother tell me in Haiti, I said, I will show you how to receive the blessing of God. There's no poor people in God. If you put God first, he obligated to, to lift you up. Sometimes people fool themselves with church. But not with God. You don't read your Bible every day. You don't listen to the prophet. You listen once in a while. When my pastor do say something, you do it. You waiting for motivation? Can you have a motivation from, from the Holy Spirit? Am I preaching now? If my pastor don't tell you to listen to a message, you won't listen to it. Is that kind of motivation you want? A recharge from the church? And you said you are a believer. You want to fight against the devil. How could you? That's what I tell Sean. When you got gift, there's more required to you. More power required. More responsibilities. More you have gift of God, there's more responsibilities to you. That's why the devil target you. You become a target. Because you become a target, that requires consecration. You think, brother Kenol, a devil attack you every day. His body devil make you do wrong things every day. Praise God. It's a persecution, you will persecute. Trouble will come, trouble. Everything will come. He said, but I will deliver you. 
He said, the persecution will happen to the just. But he says, I will deliver them. Amen. That means when the problem comes, sometimes bill come. I don't know where the bill come. I say, Lord, I don't have money for that bill. And I call the company. He said, wipe it out. We don't have it in the system. Amen. That's power of prayer. That's power of consecration. Amen. God erased them. The problem become a cloud to me. I walk on it. I thought there was a wall. I found out there was a cloud. Yeah. When you consecrate yourself. Yeah. Hallelujah. You become victorious. You become hallelujah. Yeah. You overcome every time. Hallelujah. Every day I hear a problem. Every day I just this, this. But because I consecrate it. Hallelujah. I overcome it. I told my pastor all is well. You know, I got a problem. Something happened. After that, I want a problem. All is well. Listen, thank you, brother. Hallelujah. I, like, I like what my pastor says. You're here to be loaded with the word of God. You don't want to hear, oh, my statement, come pray for me. Oh. What you doing at home? Play a game? Watch movie? And you expect God? Oh, I love my pastor. I love You don't love him. Sometimes he got things to do. He busy. Praise God. That's what he gives you the word for. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope that you catch that message. Coming out of your nonsense. Yes, Time to come out of your nonsense. Amen. Now we expose your nonsense. Amen. Hallelujah. And turn to Christ now. Amen. Praise God. May God bless you. Pastor Edmund, <laughs> who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Hallelujah. Who am I? Who am I, Lord? Pastor Edmund. Praise God. Who am I? Who am I? Hallelujah. Who am I, Lord? Hallelujah. Oh. 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 Now you know why I love, I love that song? Because I have that revelation. Oh. Oh. Oh, who am I? Who am I? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Amen. Oh. Oh, oh, it's a way. Awful. 